Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm going to be doing a uh, brief walkthrough of taking a very basic um, node application built with Express and MySQL and showing how you can deploy that on Heroku completely for free. Um, and the focus, the purpose of this video is not to show you how to build the app as much as uh, making sure that you configure your app so that you can very easily get this deployed on up and running on Heroku. So uh, what are the prerequisites? Well, you should be um, have a mastery of just basic JavaScript, HTML, and Node, and definitely helpful if you're familiar with Express and MySQL, um, which, you, you know, if you're building a Node and MySQL Express app, um, I think that kind of goes without saying. Um, now, prerequisites. Uh, you got to have Node.js version 10 plus installed on your computer locally. You should have an account with Heroku. Um, you should also have the Heroku CLI installed on your machine. Um, also, you're going to have to have a credit card account. Now, you're not going to be charged, but in order to use JAWS DB, at least the last time I checked, it's been a while, but um, I'm, I'm pretty certain this has not changed, that in order to use the JAWS DB add-on on Heroku, you must have payment information on file. Now, JAWS DB um, allows you to have a free tier add-on, so you're not actually going to be charged, at least um, at the time of this recording, you um, can have a free MySQL JAWS DB add-on linked to your Heroku app without being charged. Um, but again, uh, that's entirely up to you to make sure that is the case. I make no promises that Heroku will never charge you at some point in the future or at the time that you are watching this video. All right, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, just I'll give you a quick rundown of the app uh, that's already here. So we have a very basic um, MySQL and Express um, set up here. So in our server JS, which is the entry point for this application, um, we create a connection using the MySQL NPM package. So you want to make sure that um, should be having that installed. If we go look at our package JSON, you can see my only dependencies are Express for building the server and MySQL for connecting to a MySQL database server and performing queries. All right, so back to server, um, we have a connection, create an Express app, get um, in local development, I've been using port 3000. Um, and then there's just one route for this app, app because again, the purpose is not how to build an app here. I want to just show you how to what needs to be in place in order to deploy on Heroku with this setup. Um, so it's just one homepage route and all it does is um, perform a query uh, against the database. If we look at our schema, our database has um, a user's table. Each user has an ID email and the email is also indexed and unique for fast searching and fast lookups. Um, and then we just have some fake user accounts for John, Aria, and Tyrion um, that have been added to that database. All right, so jumping back to server, um, the way the home route works is we just do our, our query to get all the users and then a table is displayed on the page to show them. And that's just kind of to, to show um, for us to quickly be able to tell if we're getting complete full stack communication all wired up. Um, and that's about it. And I recommend, you know, one of my mantras in development is deploy early and deploy often. I like to get my app um, running on a either a development deployment or so, some exact replica of what your production deployment scenario is going to look like. So as soon as possible, you can get some real feedback and make sure that there aren't any any gotchas, anything you didn't consider in how you are um, configuring and connecting the different modules in your app. Okay, so now that we've seen how it works, why don't we just see the actual web page? So I'm going to open that up in my terminal and start up with Node Server JS. And now it says it's running on port 3000. So let's go ahead and grab that and we'll go to localhost 3000. And now we can see it's just got an H1 tag and then we can see that the table here is showing um, all the users in our database. All right, so now that we've verified the app works locally, it's time to get this thing ready to deploy. So in order to deploy on Heroku, um, with any node app, you need to make sure that you receive the port number from the environment because Heroku, the Heroku platform will assign that to your app. And so you can get that with process, which is a global in node. 
and then process.env gives you access to any environmental variables and Heroku is going to set a port environmental variable. And then just in order to keep this working when we're not deployed, um, we're gonna go ahead and provide a fallback using this or the short circuit operator. So we're just gonna fall back to 3000 if there is no port number. All right, so now we have a dynamic port. Um, let's see, what else do we wanna configure for that? Ah, yes, our MySQL connection because we're not going to be using local host um, when we're on our computer we're going to need to make sure that we have a jaws db connection so we'll get to that in a moment first we need to create our um, mysql server that's going to be linked to our heroku application um, but before we do that let's go ahead and take a look at our package json and make sure that is ready to go so if we go to package json um, we need to make sure that Heroku has a start script, and we, we certainly do, because that's what Heroku is going to use to launch the app. So you need to make sure you have a start script to run Node with your um, server.js file. So that's the basic requirements for any Express app on Node. We got our dynamic port, we have our start script, and that takes us to setting up our Heroku app. So the first thing we want to do is create our Heroku app. You can do that by going to your Heroku dashboard and using the GUI to do that, or you can also use the command line tool. I'm going to use the command line tool. So with the Heroku CLI installed, you should have a, a command of Heroku. If you type Heroku-V, should print the version of Heroku you have installed. Um, I have, um, sh it's showing that I do have that installed. You'll get an error here if you don't. All right, so now that I know I have Heroku installed, let's run Heroku create. And if I hit enter right now, Heroku is just going to assign me some random name for my app. If I want to try and create it with a name of my choosing, I can do that with Heroku create followed by the name I'd like to use. So I'm going to see if this is available. My SQL um, de deploy demo is what I called my app. I like to try and use the same name for my GitHub. And there we go. So now I've created the app. I have not deployed my app yet. I've simply created an app up on Heroku and Heroku, if we ch type in the command git um, remote-v, we can see Heroku's created a, another remote in our repo. So origin points to the GitHub repo for this project. And then Heroku is the name of the Heroku repo or Heroku branch of all of this, where we're gonna deploy to eventually. Okay, so what's up next? We've created the app. It's time to provision add-ons. Now, there's two ways you can provision add-ons. You can use the Heroku CLI with Heroku add-ons create, and then you can name the name of the add-on. Um, I kind of like to use the the GUI for this, especially um, when if it's your very first time ever um, se setting up something like a database add-on, since almost all of them, to my knowledge, require a credit card on file. So I'm going to hop onto my Heroku account. this point and I'm going to search for the app I created which is my SQL deploy demo and now in order to provision an add-on I need to go to resources the resources tab in this this menu right here and then I'm going to type in JAWS DB my SQL and now here's where if you don't want to be charged, if you're just trying to sandbox or experiment or just kind of get a feel for how to set things up, um, I definitely recommend Kite Friend Shared Free. Um, if you're going to be deploying this, then you're definitely going to want to choose one of the paid tiers, depending on what you um, think the volume and needs of your app are going to be. You can research um, that in the Heroku and JAWS DB documentation for which tier would be appropriate. So we're going to do the free one. And again, at this point, um, you would have to provide um, payment information, at least the last time I checked. Um, that does not, at this point, um, it is totally free. I have never been charged for any of my KiteFin um, JAWS DB instances. So I'm going to submit the order form. And now I have a JAWS DB instance um, for tied to my account. So the next step is going to be uh, something that's going to expose some very sensitive information. It's the keys to your JAWS DB instance. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share this because I'm going to be deleting this immediately after the video anyway. So I, I'm not too worried about having the passwords and usernames exposed. Typically, you want to keep this very secured. Make sure you don't ever let this somehow get committed into your repo in any way. Um, but our next step is going to be uh, we need to create our schema in 
in the cloud on our JAWS DB MySQL server. And so a um, couple of things we're going to have to do. First, we're going to grab this connection string right here. Um, and actually, excuse me, not the connection stream. We're going to be grabbing this information, the host name, username, password, port, and database. And I'm going to be using MySQL Workbench. And you can use any MySQL GUI or command line tool of your choosing to connect. I'm going to use MySQL Workbench, and we're going to create a new connection. So I'm going to click on this plus sign here. And then I'm going to give this connection name um, JAWS DB dash MySQL deploy demo. And that's just how I like to name things. I always start with what platform when it's a remote connection, followed by the name of the app. That's my convention. Um, and then and now we got to start plugging in the root, the host name. Uh, the port is almost always going to be 3306 on JAWS DB, um, at least with the kite fin. Um, you got to get the username and the password for that and the default schema all from our view back in the browser. So this view right here has all the information. So first we're gonna grab host and be very careful when you copy and paste um, this information as it's easy to get white space or some special character that's gonna make this not work. So I'm gonna paste that value into host. And I'm gonna go back. We're gonna grab the username next, being careful again about copy pasting here. And I'm gonna paste that into username and then port is unchanged. You'd want to make sure that that matches the port number here though. And then finally, this, the, the database right here is your schema. And if we go back and plug that into schema, now we just need the password. So if I grab um, the password and copy that, and then I can click on store in vault and add it. And then if you click test connection, you can verify if you got all that information correct. And I can see that the connection was made successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and that's going to create another um, connection. So we're going to go into that. And now we need to create a schema for our database. So that way, our all our um, Express and Node.js code can correctly query the database. So we're going to go back to our source code, grab our schema, copy that, paste it in, and I almost forgot, shouldn't have any code about creating databases. That's already done. All I need is my create table clause here. So that's done. Next up, seeds. Um, now seeds are completely optional. It just depends on your app. Um, because my app has no way of adding data, I wanna make sure I add them in right now. So that way when I test the app out, I can see if the connection is being made to the Heroku database or the uh, MySQL database. So I'm just gonna run these three insert statements. And in the output below, we can see it all worked. So that's it. I'm all done with the, my connection for now. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and close my SQL Workbench. And now that I've provisioned all of that, we can go back to Heroku. And actually, we don't even need Heroku anymore. We're done with that page as well. Our next step is updating our connection. So that way, if our, our environment is production, um, we don't use the local host connection. So what I'm going to do here is... Instead of making connection a constant, I'm going to say let connection. And then we're going to check and see if we're running in production or not. So we're going to say if process.env. And then we're going to look for JAWS DB underscore URI. Just make sure I got that correct. I can go click on settings and reveal config vars, and then we can see the JAWS DB, ah, URL, see I had it wrong, JAWS DB URL, and that's, that's standard. Um, that's gonna be, anytime you provision JAWS DB, it's gonna create this environmental variable right here for JAWS DB URL. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check and see if, there, if the environment has a JAWS DB URL, we're gonna go ahead and use that to connect, else we'll use our default local host connection. So I'll put that in the else block. And then in here, I'll say connection equals mysql.createConnection. And we'll just pass in process.env.jawsdb URL. All right, so now I've set things up so that when when my server connects, it's first gonna check oh, is there a JAWS DB URL? And if there is, then we're going to connect to the JAWS DB MySQL server. Else, if there's not, then that means we're running our app locally 
in a development setting. So we're going to go ahead and use a connection to the local MySQL database using the root user and password in my case. All right, that should be all we need. So I think at this point we're ready to commit all the changes we've made. Um, so let's go ahead and git add dash a and just quick git status. Yep, all we did was add changes to server for, for this case. So let's go ahead and git commit with a message. Um, configure server to deploy on Heroku. All right, we're ready to deploy. I'm going to first just get push to back up all my changes to GitHub in the cloud. And then I'm going to go ahead and deploy. And we can deploy with git push Heroku. Now, I created the repo initially on GitHub rather than locally. So my default branch is main, which means when I deploy to Heroku, I'm going to git push Heroku main in my case. If your default branch is master or some other name, or if you have a special branch for deployment, you'll want to use that branch name. And then you may need to do some configuration on Heroku if you're not using main or master as your default branch. OK, so fingers crossed, um, our app should be deployed at this point. It looks like everything went fine. I don't see any errors in the build log here. And so I can um, either control click on the link here or anytime you're in a, a Heroku app where you create that app from the command line you can type Heroku open and it will open your app up in the default browser and there we go we can see everything is working all right so um, that's all it takes for a very basic deployment to MySQL to Heroku with MySQL using the free tier on JAWS DB and the MySQL NPM package. Um, keep in mind, if you're using another package for your MySQL connection with your app, then um, some of the, the syntax and function calls are going to be different. Um, it's not going to be identical, but the concept still remains. If you're on in your production environment, then you're going to use a connection to your production database. If you're not, then you're going to need to provide some sort of connection to a local or development database. Um, one other tip I can give you that's kind of convenient is um, an alternative way to avoid having to choose when you deploy by using the uh, git push Heroku main command. You can do some um, basic continuous integration in Heroku if you go to deploy. And instead of using Heroku Git as your deployment method, click on GitHub. You can actually connect your Heroku app to a GitHub repo and then set it up so that way anytime you push to your default branch or another branch of your choosing, um, Heroku will automatically pull those commits in and rebuild and restart your application. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how that's done. So we're going to click on GitHub Connect. And now I'm going to go search for my repo name, which we called MySQL Deploy. So I'll just say deploy and do a search and we can click connect now. And that's going to give me a connection. And now here's where you could configure to use a different branch for your deploy branch. I'm going to stick with my main branch, which is the default. And then here's where you can allow it to deploy automatically. So by clicking on enable automatic deploys, anytime I push new code to the main branch, Heroku will be notified by GitHub pull in those changes, and then rebuild and redeploy, restart the entire application. Also, if you're using any sort of continuous integration checks um, to run tests or what have you, um, you can check this box and it'll wait for those to pass as well. So that's just an alternative way to sort of automate um, deployments with a little bit of continuous integration. You don't have to do that again. You can just stick with what I first showed and just deploy by running git push um, Heroku main and that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you tuned in, and I will see you in the next video.